Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, A8744. It's time for the big match preview. You guys know I had to roll it, man. I took my time, did my analysis, did my research, and I come up together a great slideshow for you guys about this PSG Barca game. Because for me, this is huge for both teams. This is possibly the biggest game for both their teams' seasons. Because let's be real, guys. Both these teams know that the league doesn't really mean much for them, right? And that the league is pretty much already won or either lost for either respective teams. And I think what makes this matchup so fascinating is so much narratives. You know, Barcelona wants to get revenge for what happened in 2021. You know, when Mbappe destroyed us. There's also the Mbappe narrative. You know, this could be, be Mbappe's final season at PSG and he tries to win the Champions League with them. There's also the Luis Enrique narrative. You know, after he left Barcelona, he took a break, went to Spain. Didn't really work out as he wanted. Went to PSG, and we know how Luis Enrique, uh, it's going to be very emotional for him to come back to Barcelona, to know how it feels, you know, and maybe he wants to prove something that, hey, you know, there's something you guys should have not done, you know, but, you know, maybe Barcelona should have hired me, you know, uh, maybe he has that kind of feeling. I don't know if he has, but, um, you know, I'm just maybe potentially, but there's what I'm trying to say here is that there's just so much writing upon this game, so much for both teams here. There's so much at writing upon this game. And that's what makes this game so exciting from a neutral point of view is that there's so much to unpack. There's so much to unpack. So let's go ahead and dive into this. So let's talk about um the injuries and suspension suspensions. So you can see from here from the foot bomb. Now remember, keep in mind, guys, I'm I'm recording this on the day of April 8th. So by the time April 10th or April 9th rolls around, some of the stuff may be outdated. Keep that in mind. I will try my best to make assumptions for if it does change. Obviously, one thing is for sure is Hakimi's going to be suspended for the first leg. He will not be available for the first leg, which I think is a huge, huge blow for PSG because he's one of PSG's best integral players, especially on the right side. Zai Ermi, even though it says he is doubtful, I do think he'll be back in time for this game. So I think Zai Ermi will be back. Surgery will go. He's a backup goalkeeper. It doesn't really matter. He's out for the season. Uh, it's not really important for this matchup. Uh, Kim Bempre is going to be out until mid-April, so I think he's going to miss the first leg. He could potentially be back for the second leg. Uh, Corzal is going to be uh, the same for him. He's going to he's going to miss the first leg. Uh, he could be back for the second leg, and Barcola is going to be the same for him. So if you look at those three players, I would probably say Kim Bempre is important and Barcola. I don't think Corzal is really that important, and maybe he's a decent like back a squad option, but he's not really a starter. And for Barcelona, man, are looking at our injuries. Pedri is back in training. So Pedri should be available for this game. But is he going to be 100% fit? That's what I'm not sure with. Gavi, obviously, he's out for the season. Same goes for Balde. Uh, then for De Jong, he's back in training. Now, is De Jong going to be 100% fit for this game? That's another thing to consider. And Christensen is going to be out to early May 2024. So Christensen is probably going to miss both games against PSG. So now that we get to, now we talk about the head to head. So if you look at the head to head here, it's actually quite even. Barcelona has actually won four times in the Champions League, and PSG have won four times, and it's been four draws. So it's actually quite competitive. It's actually not as one sided as many people probably expect it to be. You know, the most recent encounters took place in 2020 2021 season when PSG won 4 1 at the camp now, and then in the second leg at Parc de France, it ended 1 1. And yeah, so. I think for this one, guys, it's going to be interesting if Barca can get revenge. Now, we talk about the expected 11. So, these are the expected 11s for both teams here. So, Don Roma is going to probably start in goal. It's probably a given. And then the fullbacks. I think Nuno Mendes and uh, Bukiele will start at the fullback positions. And I think the centerback partnership is going to be Hernandez and Beraldo. And then I think that midfield trio is going to be Emery, Betinha, and Aguate. And then that front three, Asensio in the left, and Bappi up front, and Demba in the right. Now, even though I am predicting this 11, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, uh, Luis Enrique try out a 4 2 3 1. I wouldn't be surprised he tries out Dembele as an attacking mid because he did, I believe he did that against Real Sociedad. So I wouldn't be surprised Luis Enrique changes up the formation. But I think the players, the players I'm confident with, but it's the formation that I'm not really sure with. But, um, the formation may fluctuate, but I'm pretty sure most of these players will start. The only ones I'm a bit uncertain with is maybe Asensio and potentially Lucas Hernandez and potentially Guate because Fabian Ruiz could maybe start. Maybe we could see Marquinhos start and maybe we could see, um, uh, you know, um, Kuala Moani or Gonzalo Ramos start instead of Asensio. 
But, you know, most of the 11, I'm pretty salt. I am pretty uh, confident with. Now, for Barcelona, looking at our 11 right here, um, Ter Stegen's obviously going to start in goal. Then we got Cancelo and Alcunde as the fullbacks. I'm really hoping Xavi does not start Araujo at right back. I think if you start Araujo at right back, it'd be a disastrous idea because Mbappe is going to be playing up front at striker most likely. And unless Luis Enrique changes up and does a last-minute change and puts Mbappe in the left wing, there's really no point in putting Araujo at right back. Araujo only works. I think the only reason you would put Araujo at right back is to man mark Mbappe. But the thing is, I don't. I think Luis Enrique is going to anticipate him doing that, so he's going to try to do it. And remember, guys, we saw last season where I think Barcelona played against Manchester United in the Europa League. Ten Hag put Rashford at as a striker instead of as a winger, and that caught Xavi off guard. So I think I think Xavi this time around should just put Araujo at center back. I don't want to see him at right back. Now for the midfield, I think the midfield is going to be interesting. Gundogan and Fermi Lopez are pretty much locked in starters. And now the question is, are we going to see Roberto, Romeu, or Diong or Pedri? Now, I'm hoping that Diong is fit because I do not want to roll in the Champions League with Roberto as our CDM. That would be disastrous. Roberto as a DM? Oh my god, that would be disastrous. So I'm really hoping that Diong recovers, is fully fit. By the time of this game, I'm not so sure. I did hear reports that he should be able to start. Um, but Javi, please don't start Pedri. I think De Jong starting is okay because De Jong is, you know, more experienced. Pedri is too young. I wouldn't start Pedri in this game. Um, bring him off the bench if necessary, but don't start him, please. Don't start him. After a long-term injury, I really don't want another long-term injury for Pedri. Looking at that front three, Lewandowski is pretty much a locked in start and Yamal. And then for the left wing position, it's pretty much up for debate. Is it going to be between Joao Felix or Rafinha? Because you look at both these players, both these players haven't been playing well. But I think for me, if I'm Xavi, I'm going to go with Rafinha. I think Rafinha, for me, can give you more as a starter. And even though Rafinha may be terrible when it comes to decision making, when it comes to his ability on the ball to dribble past players, he's at least effective when it comes to goal scoring, goal scoring chance creation. And I think that could be very crucial, especially in this kind of game. So for PSG, how do I expect them to play a setup tactically? Like I said, I don't know how PSG is going to set up tactically, but I know that they're going to be playing most of those players. They're going to be playing counterattack. Let's be real. PSG at home is going to be playing counterattack against Barcelona. They're going to play with lots of space. And it's very, very important that PSG, the PSG is going to be very, very important, very important. And look out for them in transition. I think in transition, they're really good off the ball movement wise. I think Luis Enrique has done a great job in motivating this team. Because let's be real, guys. This PSG team tactically is a lot better than under Pochettino and then Galtier. This team is actually decent tactically speaking. And I think the one that got to go in PSG's favor is that this is at home. PSG are generally pretty good at home. They don't lose very often at home. I believe the last time they lost at home in the Champions League was against Bayern Munich last season. And let's be real. That P PSG, were ter uh, PSG were so terrible that, that time. So, you know... A lot has changed, you know? And remember, guys, PSG are very good when it comes to chance creation. My only concern with PSG is that they're not very clinical up front. And I think that is going to come down to Mbappe because Mbappe has to show up. Because if Mbappe doesn't show up, PSG are really all over the place when it comes to goal scoring. Because Gonzalo Ramos, Kuala Moani, Dembele, uh, then you have Kangi Lee. None of these guys are clinical. The only clinical player they have on this team is Mbappe. And Mbappe has to show up because if Mbappe doesn't, it's going to be very, very difficult for PSG to score and score in this game. Now, let's talk about Barca. Now, I know you guys are going to go in the comments below and start roasting me, start saying, what the heck are you saying, Orfan? Now, hear me out. Hear me out. I believe we shouldn't be playing toe-to-toe -to -toe against PSG. Because I think if we try to play toe-to-toe -to -toe against PSG, we're going to get obliterated. We're going to get exposed. We're going to get destroyed. So rather than trying to play toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and I think that's what Luis Enrique wants, Xavi, we should try to play defensive. Now, I wouldn't go as far as they completely play defensive, but make sure we are defensive. Kind of like, I want to see us play kind of more of a defense approach, like a cautious approach, right? Because this PSG team, they're very, very, I think they could be great in transition, and I think they can really exploit. And I feel like if Barcelona tries to play expansive football, we're going to get exploited, you know? And I think PSG wants that. Right. So remember how last season, guys, we played against Real Madrid. And I think we won one nil away at the Bernabeu. We should try to do something like that in this game where we be defensively solid. Make sure that Real Madrid, make sure that PSG struggle and the chance creation. And then if we get a lucky set piece, take advantage of set pieces, we could score a goal. 
Because remember, guys, if we can walk out of here with a goal, that's good. That's a great result. Because remember, guys, we're the away team here. We need to get at least a draw in this game. I think a draw would be a great result. Because like I said, we're not very good when it comes to end transition. We've seen at times when Barca doesn't have the ball, we get exposed very easily. So it's very, very important that we make sure defense is solid. So Araujo, Kunde, Kabarsi. Kabarsi has to be in his A game and Joao Cancelo. Joao Cancelo in particular, man, please don't push too much uh, up front too high because I look at, I'm looking at Mbappe. If Mbappe, because Mbappe could destroy Cancelo. <laughs> Mbappe versus Cancelo could be a disastrous matchup. You know? And I'm even looking at Dembele. And I know we clowned Dembele for his finishing, but even Dembele could destroy Cancelo. Um, when it comes to like dribbling past Cancelo, because Cancelo is very, very bad defensively. I don't like Cancelo defensively at all. So Cancelo, please make sure that you're uh, not pushing too up front, you know. And um, Kunde, you got to be defensively solid. Kunde has to be in his A game as well, you know, to mark up Asensio. And, you know, Asensio is a former Real Madrid player. So, of course, this will mean a lot for him if he could score in this kind of game. And yeah, for Barca, like I said, guys, we need to be very, very careful here, man. Very, very careful here. And we got to be efficient. Any chance we get in the final third, we got to take advantage of it. We got to be clinical because if we're not clinical, we're going to, it's going to be trouble. So now we look at the players that can be suspended for the second leg. If you look at PSG right here, only Hernandez, Guata, and Skriniar. Now, Skriniar for me, uh, I don't think he's really been that great for PSG, so I don't think it'll be a huge loss. Now, Guarce and Hernandez, these two players I think are significant for PSG. So these two players, maybe Barca should try to man mark, should try to like, Try to make sure they get a yellow card. As for Barca, look at the amount of players we have that could just be suspended for a second. Like if they get yellow card, if Christensen, Torres, De Young, Joao Felix, Yamal, Ronaldo Rao, and Sergio Roberto. Guys, we have so many players that could be a risk of suspension. And imagine we get Araujo suspended. Araujo, De Young, those two players, and Yamal, those are going to be huge losses. Huge losses. Huge losses. Especially Araujo. I think Araujo will be the most devastating one because then we're gonna have to play we're gonna have to probably play uh Inyago Martinez and I, I don't know if I want Inyago Martinez against killing Mbappe. Um I did a combined eleven for fun guys. This is how I think you know obviously I put in um Don Ruma and goal. I think Don Ruma is a better goalkeeper than Tristig. I don't really trust Ter Stig in the Champions League. Uh Hakimi for me is a better right back than Kunde. The center backs I want the Rajo Hernandez. I was also maybe thinking about Baraldo. I wasn't considering Marquinhos uh, I think for Kubarsi, it's a bit too early to put him in, so I didn't want to put him in. And the left back for me, Joel Cancel is way better than Nuno Mendes. And then the midfield, it was between uh, basically De Jong, De Jong and Guata. I think De Jong is better. Gundogan for me is better than uh, Vitinha. And I think Zaire Emery is probably better. Uh, Zaire Emery is probably PSG's best midfielder, so I had to put him in. Uh, then the front three, I put him Mbappe in the left and striker Lewandowski. Now you're probably wondering, who is that right winger vacant? That's actually supposed to be Yamal. Unfortunately, this website doesn't have Yamal's picture in there, so... I'm just going to pretend that's Yamal. So Yamal is going to be there for you guys. Okay. Now we get to the prediction, guys. I got PSG to win this game. I think PSG will just win this game on the sole basis that they're at home. I think what's going to, what could very well happen is that PSG score two goals and maybe in the first half. Um, and then Barca can maybe claw a goal back in the second half and we're not able to do a comeback. But, you know, if for Barca, as a long, even if we lose this game, one goal loss isn't too bad. A one goal differential loss isn't too bad. We could walk away the second leg. As long as we don't lose by two or more goals, I think we should be good to go. Obviously, if we could get a draw, that'd be fantastic. If we win this game, that'd be amazing. And But if we lose this game, let's just make sure it's not a too bad of a loss. So I hope you guys did enjoy this long preview I did. You know, normally I don't do these kind of long previews, but you guys know for the Champions League, of course, I got to make an exception. So please remember to like this video if you have made it this far and consider subscribing man subscribe if you're new man and let me know if there's any major talking points i missed in the comments below man i'm sure there probably is and yeah man i'll see you guys later man peace out